Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are making a card for the upcoming Halloween season using this Harvest Hellos stamp set and punch. Um, and we'll also be using a die. I haven't made a sample yet, but I kind of want to wing it for this one. So we're using this stamp set and bundle um, with the punch, but we're also using the plaid paper and I'm actually spacing on what it's called. Let's look it up very quickly. You would think I would have had that one memorized. I think it's called something like plaid tidings. It's found right here. It is a pack of six by six paper. Let me show you where that is. There it is. So here's the assortment. Let me pull it up a little bit closer really nice assortment of plaid if that is something that you like uh, the colors in the paper are all here cherry cobbler melon mambo blackberry bliss shaded spruce pretty peacock bumblebee and pumpkin pie so the pieces we're using are here so we're using this piece that has a lot of that blackberry bliss and this piece that has a little bit of the blackberry bliss and some of that pumpkin pie this is technically bumblebee but i think it'll go well anyway with this so um, there's that. Let's see. Very good. So, um, this is a card where I wanted to show you guys a paper saving trick. So I have cut this piece out. I've die cut this one ahead of time. Um, I had actually used it as a, um, I'd used the piece around it as a layer for another card, but I was like, well, I can use this piece for something else. So it measures if you see that on my uh, thing there so it's measures four and seven uh three eighths or three fourths i'm sorry four and three fourths by three and one uh three and three eighths and so i just cut this down one half or one quarter inch smaller so that it'll fit just like this so uh that means that this piece here is four and a half by three and one eighth and you'll have these dimensions on my um on my blog so don't worry about that if you are trying to recreate this card so normally you would just glue that right on there however um i want to use this paper i don't want to have it go to waste in the sense of i can definitely use it to add a little bit of flair to my card without having to use up more scrap so i'm I, because this is still all in my head, I'm not sure what I want it to look like in the end. However, I was thinking I would heat emboss in white a pumpkin here on the black, stamp in black on here, and then punch out a pumpkin with this pattern here and have like a trio of pumpkins on top of this plaid piece because it would tie in these colors. So that's what I'm going to try. And if it fails miserably, eh, we'll learn. So that being said, let's go ahead and do that. First of all, because I've been touching it a lot, let's use my embossing buddy. Uh, we used to carry this, we don't anymore, but you can make your own. Um, a little baggy, like an old baby sock with like cornstarch or some other type of powder that helps absorb the oils from your hands will do the trick. So I've got that going. Let me get my embossing powder. I use just an old coffee filter to ex uh, to collect my embossing powder. <laughs> this is how long I've had it. They've changed the labeling since then. So uh, let's go ahead and stamp on something to note before I do that. When I put my paper in, it's going to have these pieces up here too that it's going to punch out because of the way this is made. So just a heads up that that's going to happen. Um, so just make sure that when you put it down here, you don't put it too low or too high because we're actually going to die cut this for the sentiment too. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead nice and inked up and stamp. Beautiful. And actually, while we're at it, let's go ahead and we'll do all of our heat embossing at the same time because we're going to heat emboss our sentiment, Hey There Pumpkin. Boop. So there's that. You can't see it very well, but that's okay. That's not the point. The point is that it'll catch the fine powder. Doo -doo. 
And because this piece is large enough, it'll actually be pretty good about um, not burning your finger when you turn on the heat tool. So that's always nice. Ooh, look at that. So let me go ahead and flip that off a little bit. So notice here, I still have a little bit of powder there. So I use, let me see if you can show you. So I use a little tiny brush and I just kind of brush that away and just kind of blow the excess. It's not the end of the, of the world if there's a little bit of extra. There you go. There we go. This is actually also the same um, paintbrush I use for cleaning out that groove in my um, trimmer, my paper trimmer. So there's still a few spots that I see are a little bit lacking. So I'm going to go ahead and put new powder. And there you go. And the same thing on the other side. Okay, but see, notice now, because I didn't use the embossing powder on the whole paper, the places where I have put my fingers have caught it. So, just wipe, wipe, wipe away. Luckily, though, this will be covered by paper, so even if I didn't do this, it'd be fine. And actually, there we go. So, let me just... What, what happens, though, is that if there's a little too much of the powder left behind, it'll have this kind of odd coloring when you heat emboss it. So do try to make sure you're only getting what you want done. So then I just go ahead and shake this. Some demonstrators will show you just with a piece of copy paper underneath, um, and that totally works as well. I find that I would just end up using it for like scrap or something, so I try not to do that as my, ooh, what's this? Some old sticky of some sort. Okay. So there's that. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and get my heat tool. I apologize for the sound, but remember to heat it up ahead of time before you try to set this. Otherwise, it won't set very well. So. <laughs> and then this will fit right on top, which is great. There we go. I like to set mine from the back. It's a little easier to see the transformation. And I feel like it usually warps better. There you go. Do you see that change? Make sure to move it around a little bit. You don't want it to burn. Looks great. So there's that. Sorry about the noise. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, let's see if I put that up there. Oh yeah, there's space. Okay, good. I was worried. One of the, the benefits of having both um, embossed at the same time means that it saves you a step of having to like punch emboss and then punch it out and then emboss the other one. However, because I, there's enough space on this bigger piece, I can actually punch this out without it being in the way of what I'll eventually die cut. And actually, I was actually thinking I'm gonna keep this black piece and I'm gonna use that on all of my pumpkins as their stem. So now, before I move on to get more pumpkins, I'm going to die cut this. And to do that, I am using, of all things, because it's definitely not Halloween-y, but I liked the frame, because um, it is stitched. So there's that, see the stitching? It's stitched on the inside and the outside, which is definitely fun. But this is actually from the Tasteful Labels die. There really wasn't one that would be large enough for this. And so let's bring in our cut and emboss machine. So for this one, we are using our layers, just like the little sandwich instructions tell us. So it says here to place number one. So there's one. Here's two, then piece three, the die, 
and the paper. And in this case, I want my flag to go this way. I feel like there's definitely something to be said about kind of that, your eye going that way. Um, and I'm actually gonna use just a piece, this is an old piece of washi tape um, that we don't carry anymore, but I use them. I have, I just bought the magnetic uh, platform and I haven't played around with it yet. So I figured to make sure that everything goes right, I will do that. So you just put the three on top and then run this through. Notice here really quickly, I did not make it where it would be flat like this, like perpendicular, or not perpendicular, um, parallel. Uh, that is because the roller here doesn't like it when it rolls directly onto something. If you put it at a bit of an angle, it's easier for the roller to push it through. So just something to note, I also tend to go forward and backwards. That's just kind of my personal preference but you by no means need to do that um, because it cuts it out just fine and look at that super cute and now th with just that you have seen the ability to save some paper because nobody's going to see this part of your paper they're just going to see the card layout on front in front and so this makes it a nice way to not only cut down on your paper use so that you can use paper for other cards but it also helps you create more cards um, that you can send without paying extra postage. So, yep, that's enough space. So the other thing here I'm doing, see here I'm moving it in. I want more of these stems for my pumpkins. So I'm just moving it in gently because I want to make sure that there's still going to be space there. And I'm going to try the opposite side now because I figured, yeah, mm, let's see. Is that going to be in the way? I think we're good. Hmm, actually, here's what we'll do. Ready? Extra trick. Super trick. Paper saving. We're going to just do this. Snip. Because then this little piece will fit in. And then I've got my three stems for all my papers without having to mess with this. So now the ultimate like thing you need to make sure to do though is to only put your adhesive on the outer portion here, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna just use our stamp and seal. And there we go. And I'm actually just gonna put two nice strips for it because that's really all you need. So we'll just, it really doesn't matter which side. However, you, the stitching is a little bit clearer on this side. So you just go ahead and set it down. And I don't push it down until I know that it's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna use a pumpkin pie card base for this card, because I thought that that helps bring out that slight pumpkin pie in the paper. And let's move on now. Let's punch out our other pumpkins. Because that's really the last piece. I also try to put it up as close to the edge as possible to make it a little bit easier on the uh, the rest of the cards that I can make with it. Hmm, I wasn't actually, I was a little too close there. Let's try it again. There I go. That's okay. See, I, I put it a little too close where it didn't cut properly. So let's move it up just a hair. And there we go. And actually, this paper could be a fun way to make a stem for the other pumpkin. Like I could do that. Wouldn't that be fun? We'll take a look and see. All right, so now let's push these guys up. Let's stamp our final pumpkin because for this one, I really didn't even need to stamp it. And then that way, all of the different pumpkins are all a little bit different. And this is just a scrap of my pumpkin pie paper. However, the, the catch about this um, scrap, notice it is just over uh, one and three eight fourths, and it's just enough to get only the pumpkin. So that that way I'm not wasting a chunk of my paper punching out the extra stems and the extra leaves. So I'll just line it up and punch. And I'm thinking that this is one, I had this loaded up because I thought it might be fun to have a, um, a little jack-o'-lantern face and I still think that. So let's go ahead and we'll put his little face on there. And we'll see how I like it. Worst case, I've got another scrap I can use. <laughs> So, pardon the head if you see it there, and boom, 
looking good. So now let's go ahead. This is pretty good, but I kind of want to add a little bit of this. This is the um, organdy ribbon. And I am digging this. And what I'm thinking too, mm, if I have a pumpkin in front of it like this, because I could do like a trio, right? Like something like this maybe. If I had three pumpkins, mm, yeah, something like that. Maybe this one should go on the bottom. Mm, I don't know. Let's see. Let's, let's finish the stems. Let's do that first because I feel like I'll, it'll, more will come to me if I've got that down. Um, and then for the stems, because they're so small, I actually kind of like just using a glue dot. And I just put the glue dot right on the back. And you can put on the stem too if that's easier. So, And then these are actually just leftovers from my paper pumpkins because I get so many in my paper pumpkin that it takes me a while to get through all of them, which is nice. That's a nice feature of the paper pumpkin is that not only can you use the materials in it to make what it calls for as well as alternatives, but you can also do all kinds of fun um, leftover things or leftovers with your pieces. So there's that pumpkin. Let's do that with the black or the black stem for this one. And then we'll take one more look and see if I like the uh, black with the other one. And then just for making sure, let's see. So it would be like this. Ooh, I kind of like that. Let's do that one. Add a little pop of color. Boop. There we go. So I could always make it like a trio, like a straight trio instead of or ooh like that there you go just a slight one and then hello pumpkin right underneath I like it so now as much as I'd like this ribbon ooh, we can put the ribbon underneath here so what you can do is just make it the length of a card and then some I've got my just generic scissors that I have a piece of ribbon attached to it to remind me that those are my ribbon scissors so I'm going to um, glue these down uh, flat and then pop this one up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just use my stamp and seal since it's right here. Okay. See, I just got to figure it out. Oh, actually, let's, let's put this down first so that it doesn't move on us. And because this piece is kind of big, I'm going to glue all sides. There we go. And because this is all the same direction, I really don't need to worry about the directionality of things. There we go. Only push it down once you know it's where you want it to be. All right, pumpkin. Let's put you here. Do we want him there? Let's look again. And then this guy a little bit higher. Yeah, all right. So let's move them off a little bit. Let's put them off center. I feel like that'll look a little bit better, kind of breaking that frame. Nope, that's a little too much math. That's all right. So now we'll pop him up with dimensionals. And we'll just do four for good measure. And it, upon reflection, it might have been a good idea to stamp the pumpkin on there, but I feel like I worried that it would have been a little too busy if I had done that. When you take a stab at it, feel free to let me know which one worked out for you if you did do the stamping on top or not. I guess we could always do it on here. There's still a little ink on here. Let's try it. Yeah, I don't know. So it's only like second generation. It's not bad. It's not too bad. All right, so now before I put this down, I'm actually going to wrap this around like this. So, but for this, I'm going to use my Stampin' Steels Plus because that is really good with my ribbon in keeping it in place. So I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to make it where just, I can see just a hair of this uh, pumpkin pie. Let me pull it up to the camera here. Just a hair of that pumpkin pie. And essentially I'm only doing that 
to give me a sense of what is even. <laughs> so that that way it is even on both sides. Because uh, I feel like, what are the chances I've measured everything correctly? Nah, not 100%. So, well, let's go ahead and cut right here. Boop. And so now I've got a little bit of bling and I can put this right on top so you can't even see that that's what I did. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think, hmm, should I pop that up too? I think I will. But for this one, I'll use the mini dimensionals so that I'm not interfering much with the uh, ribbon. Because if I am too, if my dimensionals are too much on the ribbon, sometimes that can be problematic for keeping those dimensionals in place. There we go, just pulling off the stickers, the backings, I mean. Alrighty. And then just pop that right there. And there's the card. Um, the only thing I would need to do now is add a, um, a layer here for my card base. Um, it really, it's kind of up to you if you prefer to add a layer for this card. Um, just because pumpkin pie, while it is in that regals category, it's kind of still pretty bright. So you could write on this and have it be visible. It's just kind of up to you in case you like it. If you do, you could go ahead and use it as is. If you don't, I might even put that in there. We'll have to see. Couldn't that be fun? So that being said, here is my card for today. Let me know what you think. I know that not everybody celebrates Halloween, so you definitely don't even need to have this um, jack-o'-lantern face. You could even have picked one of the other plaids. For example, the back side of this paper is, oh, no, not the back side of that paper, the back side of this black one. Oh, did I put it a little too far away? I bet you I did. Mm -mm. Oh, here it is. The back side is just lovely, and this kind of screams to me some kind of a fall theme card. So for example, maybe with this leaf here that I've already die cut from another card, this could be a really nice card to send somebody for the holidays, for like say Thanksgiving, to maybe um, somebody a little bit more masculine, um, which I think is really nice. So I, I might make a card with this kind of pairing here but for this card we're making halloween and so let me know what you think in the comments i will have a list of all of the things that you need in order to make this card listed below and on my blog including the dimensions so if you need anything you're free to link um to click on the links there available to you and then the other thing i wanted to note was that the um uh, the paper, um, let me, I'll have to check, but um, hopefully you like this card, and if you do, you'll give it a, a try. Uh, keep in mind, this could be used for anything. It does not have to be Halloween, so you could use it for a, a Christmas card, and these could be the trees from the Pine Tree Punch. Uh, these could be tulips. It could be all kinds of things, so these are just the in my case my punch outs you could have all kinds of different layouts for this so let me know what you think and i will see you guys in the next video bye